Hello, Grade 9 Learners! Welcome to our science class. I am Ms. Ira Bianca Fortes, and I will be your teacher for this video lesson. Are you ready to explore and learn new things today? Alright! Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Felixians TV. Click the like, share, and hit the notification bell for more updates. To start our learning journey, let us play a game. It is called Four Picks, One Word. Sounds familiar, right? I will show you four pictures and you will identify the word being described. Okay, let us begin. 1. What is being described in the first set of pictures? Very good, it is heat. In physics, heat is the thermal energy that flows from a substance of a higher temperature to a substance of a lower temperature. Next! Good job! The pictures are pertaining to temperature. It is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body or an environment. Let's have the third set. Precisely, the pictures shows work. Scientifically speaking, work is a result when a force acts upon an object to cause a displacement. And lastly, Very good class, it is energy, the ability to do work. Wow, it looks like you really learned a lot from your previous classes. To continue with our discussion, let us feed our target objectives. At the end of the lesson, we shall be able to describe heat engine, explain how heat can be turned into work, differentiate spontaneous and non-spontaneous process, and differentiate heat engine and heat pump. Now, are you ready to explore another chapter of learning science and its waters? That's great! Come, and together, let us learn about heat and work. The production of heat is one of the driving forces of human activity. We use it in daily chores like cooking, drying, and ironing clothes. It is also needed to greater extent in commercial and industrial applications, especially in the field of manufacturing, where many substances are made with the use of enormous amounts of heat. So, understanding how heat works and how it interacts with various objects will help in making different processes efficient. Heat and temperature are often confused with one another. Temperature, in the simplest sense, is a measure of hotness or coldness of an object. An object that is hot has a high temperature, and an object that is cold has a lower temperature. Heat, on the other hand, is energy transferred from one object to another due to the difference of temperature between the two objects. That is why it is also called the energy in transit. Work requires an amount of energy. This energy can be of different forms. It includes mechanical, chemical, electrical, or thermal. Sometimes, energy needs to be converted from one form to another in order to make work. One such object that allows us to produce mechanical work from a type of energy is called an engine. In order to convert, heat energy to mechanical work, a device called heat engine is needed. To perform work, heat is taken in by the engine from a heat source, also called the high temperature reservoir. The energy absorbed by the heat engine is used to perform useful work. However, not all the heat absorbed by the engine can be converted into useful work. There will always be a portion of heat that will be lost as a result of other interactions, like friction. This lost heat is called waste heat. The waste heat 
goes to the low temperature reservoir or the heat sink of the heat engine. The energy converted as useful mechanical work is equal to the difference in the heat input from the high temperature reservoir and the heat output that was received by the low temperature reservoir. It has a big role in the development of the modern industrial world. It takes many forms, from internal combustions in cars to the giant turbines that can generate electricity. Heat engines make use of a substance inside them that undergoes cooling or heating, compression or expansion, and sometimes change of pace. This substance is the working substance of the engine. For example, the working substance in a steam engine is water and in a gasoline engine is gasoline air mixture. There are two classes of combustion engines. The first one is the external combustion engine where burning of fuel takes place outside the engine. Examples are steam, piston engine, and the atmosphere. The second one is the internal combustion engine. Burning of fuel takes place inside the cylinder or turbine engine. Examples are gasoline, diesel engine, and our human body. And the four stroke cycle in a gasoline engine are intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. The next thing that we have to know is the difference between spontaneous and non-spontaneous process. In spontaneous process, heat flows from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. It does not require any external energy to occur. In non-spontaneous process, heat flows from a lower temperature to a higher temperature. It needs mechanical energy to occur. Drying of leaves is an example of a spontaneous process because it is a natural process and does not require any mechanical energy. Next, we have rice cooking. Rice cooking is an example of non-spontaneous process because it requires mechanical energy for it to happen. Now that we have known that every non-spontaneous process needs work or mechanical energy enabled to reverse the process, it is about time for us to find out how heat pump functions. Heat flows from a colder object to a hotter object. With the use of a heat pump, the reverse can be done. It is a device that allows heat to transfer from a colder reservoir to a warmer reservoir, which is not a natural process. Work is required for the heat to flow from a lower to a higher temperature. This work is provided by the motor of a heat pump. How about this question? What do you think is the most efficient way to heat and cool our home? Of course, it is with the use of a heat pump. In some countries, especially those who are experiencing both winter and summer, they have a heat pump system installed at their houses, which helps them to cool and heat their homes. But here in the Philippines, since we are a tropical country, we are always looking for a way to cool our home, and even to drink or eat cold foods, right? There is a typical application of heat pumps that can be seen inside our houses, and those are the refrigerator and the air conditioning unit. To further discuss this, please watch the next part of this video lesson using the link shown in the presentation. To differentiate heat engine and heat pump, let's have this. In a heat engine, heat is taken in by the engine from the high temperature reservoir, then the energy absorbed will be used to do work. Since not all the energy absorbed will be used to perform work, some are expelled to a source at a lower temperature. While in heat pumps, this device utilizes heat transfer from cold to hot, meaning to say, they are running backwards or doing the reverse of the process. And to be able to reverse the process, work is needed. Here, 
the mechanical work is provided by the heat pump's motor. At this point, let us see what you have learned from our discussion by answering learning task 1. Distinguish the process as spontaneous or non-spontaneous process. Write S if spontaneous and NS if non-spontaneous on the blank. Number 1. Melting of ice. Number 2. Rusting of iron. Number 3. Marble going down the spiral. Number 4. Going uphill. And number 5. Keeping the food fresh from spoilage. Alright, let us check. Number 1. Melting of ice. Spontaneous. Letter S. Number 2. Rusting of iron. Spontaneous. Letter S. Number 3. Marble going down the spiral. Spontaneous. Letter S. Numbers 1, 2, and 3 are all spontaneous process because they are all natural process and they do not require any external mechanical energy for them to happen. Number 4. Going uphill. And S, non-spontaneous. Number 5, keeping the food fresh from spoilage. And S, non-spontaneous. Numbers 4 and 5 are both non-spontaneous process. It is because they require an external force or mechanical energy for them to happen. Is that all clear? Okay, if that is clear, I have here 5 questions for you to answer. Number 1. What is the function of a heat engine? Letter A. It converts chemical energy to mechanical energy. Letter B. It converts mechanical energy to chemical energy. C. It converts thermal energy to mechanical energy. Or letter D. It converts thermal energy to chemical energy. Number 2. All of the following are examples of spontaneous reaction. Except A. Drying of leaves B. Water falling from waterfalls C. Keeping the food fresh from spoilage or D. Rusting of iron Number 3. Renz observes the waterfalls used in hydroelectric power plant. He found out that it flows naturally that makes the turbine rotates. What makes this so? A. Spontaneous process occurs naturally. B. Spontaneous process needs heat pump to exist. C. Spontaneous process requires work to make it possible. Or letter D. Spontaneous process tends the heat to flow from lower temperature to cooler temperature. Number 4. All of the following are example of non-spontaneous process. Except A. Keeping the food fresh from spoilage B. Cooling of water C. Spoilage of food Or letter D. The breakage of egg And number 5, what is the use of a heat pump? It is used to A. Transfer heat from a colder reservoir to a warmer reservoir B. Transfer heat from a warmer reservoir to a colder reservoir C. Transfer heat to a colder reservoir Or D. Change heat Okay, let us check if you get the correct answers. Number 1. The function of a heat engine is Letter C. It converts thermal energy to mechanical energy. Number 2. All of the following are examples of spontaneous process. Except, Letter C. 
keeping the food fresh from spoilage. Number 3. The water that falls from a waterfalls occurs naturally. That is why the answer is letter A. Spontaneous process occurs naturally. Number 4. All of the following are example of non-spontaneous process, except letter C, spoilage of food. And lastly, number 5, what is the use of a heat pump? It is used to A. Transfer heat from a colder reservoir to a warmer reservoir. Good job, grade 9 students! I hope that what you have learned today from our discussion will become a seed that grows in you, which you can use in the future. Thank you for your participation, and again, I am Ms. Ira Bianca Cortez, your grade 9 science teacher.